found Rehoboam had uh, really gone away from God, uh, and Judah had gone away from God. They had idols. They, had, uh, they were worshiping anything and everything except God. So when Asa took over, he decided to um, make a decree. We will serve God. We will serve the one and only God. So he destroyed all the places on the high, on the mountains, and he destroyed all the idols, and he, and he destroyed all those things that people were worshiping and tried very hard to bring um, God back into Judah. And uh, as he was doing this, um, <coughs> God blessed him um, by having 10 years of peaceful uh, with, of peace without any wars or without any um, confrontations. And then after that decade, his first war did come up, and it was with the Ethiopians. Uh, it, is, it is said in the Bible that the Ethiopians had about a million soldiers and about 300 chariots. Asa's <coughs> armor didn't have Asa's army did not have half that. They had about 300, is what the Bible says in, in, um, in Chronicles. They had about 300 soldiers was, was what his army was made up of. In fact, it said uh, Asa had an army in, in uh, chapter 14, verse 8. It says, now Asa had an army of 300,000 uh, bearing large shields and spears and 280,000 from Benjamin uh, bearing shields. And uh, wielding bows, it doesn't say anything about any chariots. Uh, that was always the, the uh, uh, that was always uh, an extra added attraction that um, the stronger armies had. In verse nine, it goes on to say that Zerah, the Ethiopian, came out against them with an army of a million men, three hundred chariots, and and he came to Marishah. He was in a situation here where he was totally outnumbered, um, and uh, he did what he should have done, and that was what? Do you know what he did? He did. He called upon the Lord to help him out in this situation, and he had, he had said earlier, and what I've said, he had gotten, tried to get all the idols out of Judah, try to clean up the place, make it more godly, and... Uh, Look towards God. the The lesson today is 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 living faithful, completely faithful. In other words, it's the fact that Christians and we have seen this and we have known this. A lot of times, um, people will either start off slow and get stronger, or start off really fast and sometimes get derailed somewhere along the way. Asa was the latter. He started out really, really good, and this was one of his triumphs. He went against the Ethiopians, and it says that God routed the Ethiopians, is uh, what's said there. They chased them down. They took much of their stuff and, and took the spoils of war, and uh, they became, it was a great victory for him. And he, then he did the correct thing after that. Who did he give the praise to? God, capital G. Yes. He gave the praise to God. Now, so this was, Asa was on a good roll. And, and when we read this, uh, these first two chapters, we see, wow, Asa was turning Judah around, turning God around. He was on a roll. He was giving God the praise. He got rid of the idols. He was, he won this big war, and and uh, one, then one of the um, uh, prophet came to him, told him to stay steadfast. Uh, he accepted that wisdom. He, he 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 tried to stay steadfast, and he kept on ruling. <coughs> So where, where does it all change? Well, 
His decree was to seek the Lord God. And um, that was in verse 4 of chapter 14. When we get to chapter 15, Azariah, the prophet, delivers a word of admonishment to King Asa. And he includes a history lesson. <clears throat> he told Asa to stay strong, uh, to not lose courage, and that there was a reward for his work. He reminded Asa that the Lord is with you when you are with him. Uh, in verse 2 of chapter 15. Uh, he points out his, historically what has happened, that he, he has helped him with the, with the destroying of the Ethiopian army. Uh, and in fact, he even did another good thing uh, in, in verse uh, 12 and 13, chapter 15. Uh, those people that wanted to defect from Israel to Judah, um, it says that they entered into the covenant to seek Lord, the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and soul, and whoever would not seek the Lord God, Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. So he came, and those of Israel that wanted to defect, he, was, he accepted them. He accepted them, uh, even though Israel at this time was still struggling, not following God, but Judah was. Chapter closes, chapter 15 closes, and as it closes, uh, God responds by blessing Judah with peace, until the 35th year of King Asa's reign. Asa's story continues to be one of great success. So chapter 14 and 15 show how good this guy was doing, how good Asa was doing. And then chapter 16 comes about. And this could be a little confusing uh, for, for some that are reading it. Um, Asa makes a strategic move that some would say on the battlefield today was a very good move, a very strategic move. God sends Hanana, Hanani, uh, the seer, to Asa with a sobering message and a second history lesson. What, what's this message? You should have relied on God instead of having relied on another king. So what's happening here is when he was challenged by the king of Israel, and the king of Israel was banding with Ben-Hadon, ben Hadon, I guess, king of Aram, he went to the king of Aram, gave him a bunch of gold, silver, and said, hey, why don't you just, why don't we just make a compromise? So when this happened, the king of Israel backed off because he didn't have support, that he felt he needed to go and, and take over Judah, and he, he needed to stop Basha's, Basha's threats, and his, his strategy worked perfectly. Basha withdraws, situation handled. Like I said, if it had been today, uh, military strategists would have praised the king Asa's prowess. What did he do wrong? What do you think he did wrong? Because he, he it, it went downhill from here. He relied on the other king instead of relying on God. All of a sudden, I guess after 35 years, he, he felt like he could do it. He could do it. Does that happen sometimes in our lives that we get to the point that we think that we're so right or religious that we, we put more of our self into it before we put God into it? Is it possible that that could happen? Is it possible that that we uh, um, 
we get to think that we can handle anything, that we can handle anything in life without God's help. This is something I can handle. I don't need God for this. I think it's easy for us to slip into that. I think it is too, Phil. I mean, just looking at Lisa and all the other people in the Old Testament that did that, part of our human nature is we Seems like it. Yeah, it, it seems that way, that it, it, it is easily that we can slip into thinking that this is something that we can handle. Um, and and I, I, I know I've done it. I, I, you know, I've, I've felt that, why well, bother God with this? I can handle this. This is no big deal. Uh, um, and I, but I think that um, the uh, prophet here was trying to tell Asa that, you know, you try, you're trying to switch over the attitude of, of, of the way the, uh, Judah feels about God, then let's include him in everything. Let's include him in all our decisions. Let's include him, include him in the way we approach life. And yet Asa had done that so well for 35 years. He, he had done it so well, but so quickly he and here again, when, I, when I've read this several times and I've looked at it, and it seems as though this, that this was a pretty, pretty strategic move, strategy-wise, to uh, stay out of war. Um, what do you think about that? Was it a good strategical move? Then why was God, if it was such a good strategic balloon, why was God upset with him? Why was he upset? The prophet told him that he would, that there now their Judah would continue in warring because of what he had done to him. Where he had gone all those years with relative peace and yet now, it was going to be a different story. <clears throat> Is there a lesson here for us? For God, I just have a plan for us, but sometimes we think that we have a better plan, and that we, we can't do that, Lord. We have to not have a way for things to go one way, Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hanani reminds Asa about the battle with the Ethiopians when he was outnumbered two to one. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered you, delivered them into your hand. Chapter 16. He's reminding him that how did, do we remember the story and how did Asa uh, re, how did he react to this uh, encouragement or reprimand? What did he do with the prophet? He put, he put him in jail. Yeah. That's how he reacted to it. He reacted in anger. He responded to it with this message uh, in anger. Um, he throws his messenger into prison. Three years later, he's become seriously diseased in his feet. His disease was very severe. Even in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but he sought his physicians. Here again, um, and, and I read this, well, it's, it wouldn't be wrong to seek the physician, but he wasn't, he was putting them first and not going to the Lord to help him. <clears throat> when we're talking about that, do you, do you think, do you think we, you think I, maybe that me, do you think I have any idea what you're talking about, about what it looks like to, I mean, like this stuff in these in these big contexts, you know, we always say that we 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 we, we, we you gotta rely on God, you gotta make God. But like, I mean, what does that? I mean, does that just mean I'm saying a prayer about everything? 
does that mean? Because like you just said, I mean, I'm going to go to the doctor. Sure. I, I, I am too. I am too. I'm going to go every time. I am too. I am too. I don't know. I think sometimes when we talk about these things in such, in such broad scope, like I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. Like, so what am I doing in my life that I'm not turning over to God that I should? Or what am I? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's if that's always clear. Dave, Dave, I think it's a matter of the direction of your life. In other words, um, I think a lot of times it is a, a a sincere prayer to our our God. I think it's a it's a time when things are troublesome that, uh, well, I can do this and this and this and make it all better. But I never, ever, ever think it's wrong to ask God for help in that situation. Amen. Um, I, I, I think that the point that uh, I think uh, the lesson is in Asa is that he had lost his dependence on God and because of his position maybe, because of his, and I don't know what it is to be a king. Mm -hmm. So, but his total control of Judah, he was the king. He, what, when he made a decree, all the, guy, all the people had to do it, you know. So, but I, I think that uh, even especially in a, in a position that he was in where he could decree whatever he wanted to, that there's a real attraction to feel as though over this 36 year period that he was king that you become more dependent and think that I can do it rather than needing God's help. And I think that's the principle behind it all. I, I, think, I think it's just a fact that, <clears throat> and, and we've said this before, and then you, you may have heard me say it before. A lot of times uh, you hear this all the time, well, all we can do now is pray. <laughs> all we can do now is pray. Probably that prayer should have been done ahead of time. In other words, it's, it's, it's not a last resort. It's a, an, an initial reaction, an initial move in life to, to, where, to where you get God on board with you, and then you go to the, go to the doctor. You know, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm like you. If I have something wrong with me, and I'm seriously... And I need drugs and, uh, to make me feel better, you know, until I can get better or help, help heal the body. I, I'm not going to hesitate going to the doctor. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get God on board right off the bat. Right off the bat. And I think, I think that's the, the moral of the story, the, the, the fact that, that Asa had got to the point where he had done that in in those first years, he had done it well, he had done it good, and yet he didn't really complete his life out keeping God in that position in our life. And I think that changes in people's lives. I think that <clears throat> I think it's the reverse a lot of times when people are baptized. Do you think with him that it was more <clears throat> That creeps into that. That creeps into that. I mean, maybe at first. Sure. Thought, but, oh, you know, I'm getting sure. this. I sure. can do this. That definitely creeps into it. And I know that as we try, and, and like, like David said, sometimes it's very hard to put ourselves in the position of some of these Old Testament um, uh, people. It's, I think the principle here that we're trying, that uh, is for us in these, in these uh, in the Chronicles here, and in Asa's life is that we can start off real strong and keep going and keep going, but then something derails us. And we've seen that in, in the lives of, of, of Christians that started out really strong. And then, because and, I tell you, there's no more exciting time in your life is when, when you're baptized and you know that all those things that you've done in the past are washed away. That's pretty exciting. But yet sometimes, are you raising your hand? <laughs> so, sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes we get derailed because of life as we go along. Yes? Verse 9 in chapter 16. Verse 9 in chapter 16. Both of 
Second Chronicles. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro. And this was the scripture that was the, uh, was the theme scripture for this. Uh, for that. But that, that's good. Normally you just drew that right out. Did you look at my notes or something? No. Okay. <laughs> for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this deed. From now on, you will surely have wars. Yes, Asa's heart was the problem. That seems to be a, a recurring, recurring uh, theme in, in some of these uh, guys that we that we uh, talk about. Well, <coughs> when, when you always see issues when, when, when people are 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 going after you know going after earthly power, <coughs> you always see, and, and, and that's what some kind of well, what we would call a treaty, right? Like that's what some kind of agreement. That's what that is. It, it is a. It's a way to better position yourself, whether it's for safety, whether it's for economic prosperity, whether it's whatever. It is. You know, but but you see in that same passage, he talks about he starts oppressing people. Well, I mean, you know, that's but that's about that's about power. In the Old Testament, that really is what I mean goes on constantly, constantly until, until Jesus says, you know, my kingdom is not of this world, and if it was, we'd fight. But we don't fight, because that's not why we're here. That's right. And, it, you know, it, it, it brings about a lot, a lot of clarity to <coughs> as to why these people have the problems that, that they have, because they're always trying to fight for power, and, you know, Jesus isn't about that life. Right, right. And that, and that puts true perspective on things. Those that are seeking power, it's going to end up... Uh, drawing yourself farther away from God. Let's look at uh, there was a scripture I wanted to look at in Hebrews. I should have wrote that scripture down because I looked it up. Uh, uh, <clears throat> see if I can find it. Hebrews 12, starting in verse 4. Hebrews 12, verse 4 through 11. And this is what you're talking about, Julia. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. And you have, you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scour uh, scourges every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partner, partakers, then you are, then you are um, illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be su subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they discipline us for a short time, as seems best to them, but he, but he disciplines us for our good, so that we may share his holiness. All discipline from the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful, yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. What does that mean to you? <laughs> well, 
what's the Hebrew writer talking about here? If you what now? If he loves you, you will be disciplined. I think that's kind of what he says here, too. He's going to, he's going to, what do you think that discipline looks like? What does that discipline look like? So what do you think it looks like? Okay. Give me an example. Give me an example. Anybody want to, anybody been disciplined lately? Joe, you've been disciplined lately? Yes. The towers in New York City, that that right. was God's discipline. <clears throat> I, I, I don't think that's how that happened. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. But I agree with Davey. I don't, I'm not sure Let, on a daily basis <laughs> what it looks like. When he, what? Because, I, I mean, I struggle every day with um, road rage. Road, road rage. No, I'm just I was just thinking with one of mine. I struggle oh, okay. with. Yeah, yeah. That's not. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my little thing, not my thing. Okay. Um, but yeah. I mean, but I struggle every day with like this whole thing of like knowing God's direction for me. You know, I mean, I mean, I feel like I've struggled my whole life with that. It's like people are like, well, you know, we heard heard people say, well. Uh, you know, like we prayed about that, and then we felt really strongly that this was the direction. And I was like, "That's great for you," because that's been a struggle my whole life. Sure. To know, you know, sure. where where I'm being. It, it is. It isn't always right. clear. It's kind of foggy at times. Right. The direction. But yeah. That's poor discipline. Then. No. That, I mean, if it's not, I mean, <coughs> if you want to effectively discipline. Someone, right? But your parent, you want to effectively yeah. discipline. It, it, it's got to be immediate. It's got to be clear. Like the kid has to understand why this is happening. The kid has to understand okay. what it is you want them to do instead. Let me. Like, that's why this is so hard. So mm -hmm. I think what people do, like Dorothea was saying, they just start making up stuff. Okay. Well, let's say let, illness is discipline. Let, let me. Let's say accident. Let, 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 say, let, let me. Let me. And I don't know if I can put any clear, clarity on this or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. I think. That, that, that when God disciplines us, when we can see the discipline, we can see the discipline in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier to see in hindsight mm -hmm. where, where I really wanted to tell that driver and get right up on their, their tail end and, and blow my horn and and tell and tell them you're an idiot. You got your driver's license from Sears and Roebuck. Okay, um, and I don't do that. Okay, well, at least we're going to pretend that I didn't do that. Okay, yeah, I mean I didn't do it, but what I didn't do that. I my my wife was there to say, Dave, just calm down. Yes, they don't. They're not very good drivers, but. Calm down. And I don't do something that would have been something that I should not have done. Now, that's easily seen in hindsight that I'm glad I didn't do that. 
I've done that a ton of times where I said, boy, I, Norma, this is what I really like to say to this, this individual, but I'm not going to because that is not what I should do. That is not going to help the situation. I'm looking, if I make the right decision, then I'm looking in hindsight and I feel better about the situation afterwards. And I think that, that that's part of our disciplining. I think that's the Holy Spirit working in you, Will. I hope so. I mean. I hope so. I mean, I, that, that seems to me that that, because, I mean, I've had situations like that where, like, I almost said something, and then something happened, and I didn't say it, and then later on I was like, yeah, that would have been really bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and, but I'm not sure that. I wouldn't consider that an example of discipline. You would not. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's That's, fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's more like self-discipline. I think discipline has to be for something you've done, doesn't it? Not for something you prevented. Okay. I think. And I've got Vinny. I'll get to you, but I'll show your hand. But I, I think this whole conversation isn't exactly the context of what the Hebrews writer is talking about. Right? Okay. Like if you go back a little bit. He talks about, you know, um, the beginning of the chapter, he talks about, therefore, since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside the sin that we have and, 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 and run the race. And he talks about, for consider him, Jesus, who endured such hostility by sinners against himself. He dealt with strife and hardship because of sin around him. And then he talks about, well, you have not resisted to the point of shedding blood. You haven't gone that far in resisting against sin. So you're encountering these <coughs> hindrances, this, this pain, this strife, and it's not necessarily a, a, well, you did this, so you got this discipline. It's, there are sin in your life, so you have things that happen to you. So like, it's not necessarily God putting his finger on you and saying, you did this, so you're going to have this. So you think it's the results of sin that cause our discipline? That's what it seems like from the context. I mean, okay. I, I mean to me, that's what the context seems to state. Okay. That it's not God putting his finger on us. It's just what happens. And we have to endure those things. We have to strive to do better in those things. And that's the discipline, the, okay. the byproduct of that. All right. Vinny. I think that if you look at this. Look You'll at be this, next. Look at this and say, if you lay out a, a dish of candy to a, a child and he eats all that candy and gets sick, free will is what this is all about. Or send them back to their parents. Yeah. <laughs> but free will, that's what the discipline is about. Because we have our deep choices. And I know when I make a dumb choice. Hello. Um, that well, God I don't think it was your choice to fall. He wasn't, mad, he wasn't mad at me when this happened. He wasn't punishing me for something. I made that on my own. But he gave me the free will to, to I don't know if I'm explaining it right. To make the best of it. Or to go about it in a whole different attitude. Yeah, but it, he didn't do it because because I done something wrong to somebody. Right. This wasn't punished. He doesn't punish us like that. I don't think. Okay. He punished us kind of when he gave us free will. Okay. That's a big, big thing. Okay. To have to manage free will. Okay. It's huge. Uh, yes, in the booth. <laughs> My discipline comes when I do something stupid. Uh, it's the pain and sorrow I feel in my heart. Is that uh, like like Daniel was saying the sin when you commit something that's well, that's more like the conscience is what he's talking about. <clears throat> well, that that brings me to ask for forgiveness and draw closer to God. Okay. Say, because if I don't do that, then I feel miserable. Okay. All right. That's uh, that's kind of more like what I was what I was saying about. If you don't do, well, you did something, right? Well, so yeah, you wouldn't have did something. Story, you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, but I could have. <laughs> I could, but it, it was in my mind. It was, it, 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 that was the, the thought, the, the thought was there, right? The thought was there. Okay. Yes, yes. running the race, look out and train. You know, discipline is 
training and learning how to do it, are we not teaching ourselves? Are we training on what to do in God's work? Yeah. Just thinking, looking at it sure. a little bit differently sure. with the word. Sure. That, and, and you know, in today's society, um, in today's culture in the United States, discipline has a whole different meaning for every person you talk to. You know what I mean? The word, the word discipline. Um, and I know it's, I know it's, it means, you know, try to change a person's, or try to direct a person in the right direction. Um, but it has so many different, so many different meanings. And uh, I think you brought up some good points. And uh, I'm not going to disagree with any of them. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I read this, I read this passage and I, and uh, like you said, Tia, some, some people look at it as, you know, way over here, and some people look at it, you know, way over here. And um, I'm going to leave you with this confusion. Um, <laughs> and, 